It's on Sweet Week, and like all other wet rooms on the block, it's a tough one to keep on schedule. There are screeds going down, joists going up, and plenty of tiles being ordered and delivered. The ensuite may be a relatively small room to build, but it never fails to deliver big headaches and delays. I'm nervous right now, because if we don't win it, we've got nothing. And tonight, we're going to make it just that bit harder to get the job done. You will have 24 hours to redo a room that has already been delivered. Shelley drops a midweek bomb that will have the couple scrambling to complete a redo room in 24 hours, all while continuing to work on their en <sighs> I just don't see how that other one will look good. Makes me nervous. And with three days left till reveal, it's time to block, drop and roll. Jen has woken up happy after a night of mischief. Last night I prayed a little prank and I um, personally leaned up everyone's car <laughs> and I'm trying to frame Dee. <laughs> I put the fire hydrant and a little top of Vaseline in her little cupboard under the stairs. So hopefully someone finds it today. <laughs> I went to bed at five. I went to do waterproof. Oh, I hate the block. Yeah, I love the block. We've got the underfloor heating going in this morning. Tyler's coming back at nine. We're going to tile the floor and then he's going to come back tomorrow and do the walls. Oh, it's going to be flat out. It feels like we've been here for 600 days. Like, every day feels like a week. Every week feels like a month. I mean, it just... It definitely feels like we're coming to the end, especially when it comes to spending money. I feel like there's no money left, so it's towards the end. You know, there's only terrace after this, so I'm thinking about what to do in there, and then that'll be it. The apartment will be finished. Last night, the group met to discuss Max and Carsten's puzzling low-cost tiling bill. Um, apparently, some people are questioning why it's so low when some people's are so high. I'm not sure how much all of you guys are charging your tilers per hour. You can't, you can't pay anyone anything less than 45 an hour. Five an hour. That's your builders. Yeah, we were told. No, any trees. No, any trees. Any trees. And now Carsten is hoping he's heard the end of it. Well, I had a chat with everyone and everyone sort of felt sorry for us. Like, they didn't want what happened to happen. Um, and they knew that we did, didn't do anything on purpose. I think because we're in a competition that there had to be questions asked about why it was so low, but I do think that they just... It was an oversight. I don't think that they did it deliberately. They ended up paying $27.50 an hour, but the minimum is 45 So I think they're going to pay the difference. But I'm still skeptical about the hours worked. Like, you know, 1300 divided by 2750 is about 40 hours. You cannot tile and waterproof that bathroom in 40 hours. My laundry took about 100 hours to tile. That's half the size. It would be nice to think that they, they just don't know. But they might be sneaky. I think there's a general feeling that today is a fresh start and we're moved on from it. Full stop. In apartment four, Shannon's alter ego, Professor Voss, has made an appearance. I'm your professor, Professor Voss. And here is something we have prepared earlier. We have put the aqua check in, we have built a nib wall, after the steel has gone in, of course, yesterday. Um, our services have gone in due to Simon. He's uh, the plumber of the house. Uh, we'll continue the aqua check all the way around. And last night, very, very late, we have put the, uh, the waterproofing down. The rest is for the inferior race. We are, we are the, the Voss boys and uh, we work, yeah. We're very good. In apartment five, Darren is hoping that the rumour of a mystical waterproofing product is true. Carson is saying that he has this waterproofing product that only takes half an hour to dry. So if that's the case, 
and it's legit. I'm going to go over and ask him where he got it from, and he's going to get left. Most waterproofing products take up to 24 hours to dry, so getting the ensuite done super quickly would be a big step ahead for Darren. Given that we have to tile tonight, we need all the drying time we can get. Layers of that needs to be done. Uh, two on the walls, and then there's one on the floor. It's thick, isn't it? Can we help at all? Yeah. Will it make it quicker? Yeah, five minutes anyway. Oh, really? Tim's quick, mate. That's why our bills are so low. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the stuff that dries in half an hour? It dries, in, yeah, half 45, yeah, Is on it? a cold day. Yeah. Where do you get it from? Beaumont's. Do you? Yeah, that's it there. So Beaumont's do that? Yeah. Aqua block. No, no, I want to go and get some of that. Magic. Meanwhile, down in the car park. Oh, kidding. Michael's made a mysterious discovery of his own. That's all in the front window, too. Who's playing silly buggers? They haven't got done. Oh, they've got some on their windscreen. Boys got done as well. Well, that rules them out. Someone's gone and put gasoline in everyone's door handles. The only car that's not here is D and Daz's. I wonder if D's up to silly buggers. I don't think um, Daz could be bothered. Jenna, you cheeky little joker. Looks like you've gotten away with it. Coming up, Keith pokes around the boy's screed and finds it's not measuring up. To me, it seems about 90 to 95 mil which is approximately 30 mil above what's actually been recommended to put on top of the existing slab. And later... So you were telling fibs? No, I wasn't telling fibs. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes a few simple well-placed words on a T-shirt can also do the trick. I went and got this made because I'm sick of answering this question. Where's Simon? Where's Simon? Where's Simon? Oh, Shannon. Boom. Conversation averted. Boys, are you going? Good, mate. Ah, uh, Shannon, where is... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> so, where is Simon? Budget and time constraints, Carlene has had to ditch the feature tiles for their ensuite. They were our feature tile, but to cut those is very time consuming and we don't want to pay the tiler the time it will take to do it. We're sending it back and getting enough of the bigger tiles, which is going in the rest of the bathroom, to do the whole bathroom. We've got two rooms left and an upstairs terrace and we need to have enough money left to do that well because we don't hold much hope in winning this ensuite. While Carlene's got tiles on her mind, her better half, Mike, has Vaseline on his. How's it going? Good morning, Mr Funky Bun. How are you? Very well. Daz, can you guys account for your whereabouts from about 9 o'clock till 8 o'clock this morning? <laughs> 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. We were here, mate. I was in you my, in my uh, en suite. Why? What can happened it, now? Can anyone attest to that? Each other. Oh, yes. Very convenient. In your personal time, do you guys use any type of lubricant? <laughs> <laughs> Just WD-40, mate. WD-40, OK. You guys don't use Vaseline for anything? No. Just for chafe. Because <laughs> what's happened... What's happened? Someone has gone through and um, put Vaseline on everyone's door handles and windscreens. Well, I have a clue for you. Yesterday, I was in Chris and Jenna's apartment yep. and I saw a jar of bass in their kitchen. OK, so they use bass. They definitely use bass. I saw a little jar of bass because I commented on it and said, I haven't seen bass for a long time. Detective Michael, can I show you something, please? That's what was left in our doorway this morning. Someone is taking the... Oh. That is not my Vaseline, categorically, no. Last night, everyone else's cars got done, except for yours. 
What happened? And... Well, oh, was it the car doors handle? Oh. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mention it. I didn't mention that, but... You know why yeah. our cars didn't, mate? Because it wasn't here. Yeah, because I was at home last night. <laughs> she, she was so having dinner with the girls. I went dinner with the girls and then came back at about 10.30. OK. Interesting. So I wasn't even here. Mm. Someone is trying to frame us. Put that prop in there. <laughs> Um, and when the results come back from this, then you'll, you know, go for certain. Yeah. Good luck. Oh, thanks. Hey, Chris, hi. Yeah, mate. How you going? Good. Do you know where Jenna is? No. I think she went out. We've had another prank stuff. Yeah. We've gone through and put Vaseline on all our car doors. Yeah. The only person that didn't get done was D and Daz. Do it, do and then I, found, it then I found the vats in their apartment. <laughs> so I'm sending it off for testing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I thought it was dead from the start. Yeah, same. So we should all sit down and think of something to get them back. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Cool. We'll come up with it today. Yeah, all right, cool. I get the feeling we haven't heard the last of this. Ah, uh, so that's where Simon is, the local cafe. That's so funny. It's good, eh? And the brothers are feeling pretty smug about their chunky screed. So that massively thick screed, that will never, ever, ever crack. <laughs> Jeez, that thing's massive. That went down, good. Yeah. Water pressure went down. Steel's in, good. frames are in. Boys are plastering now. Hopefully get the sheet and walls up today. I think we might be on track. They need to be because they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink into this ensuite in the hope of taking out a much-needed win. When the average bar filled with water weighs over 150 kilos, it's Keith's responsibility to make sure the floors can bear the load. But when it's the floor that's causing the weight issue, that's a whole other matter. Simon and Shannon's matter. The boys come up to me and say, Keith, overnight we actually borrowed two barrows of sand. But it's quite obvious they've borrowed a bit more than that because we're missing maybe two or three metres of sand. It's a lot of sand. And at the moment, Fabian, our screeder, can't do the screech because there's no material here to use. And I'm thinking, well, why, why have they used so much sand? The thing is, they've only got a small area. It doesn't make sense why all this sand is missing. They've obviously used too much. Well, I've gone into the boys' room measured up the actual height of the screed. To me, it seems about 90 to 95 mil, which is approximately 30 mil above what's actually been recommended to put on top of the existing slab. So at the moment, I'm a bit worried whether we can actually let them carry on and build over top of it. The boys may have to rip that screed up. This upsized block is one-sixth the size of the MCG. Almost three times bigger than an Olympic swimming pool. More than twice the size of the White House. However you crunch the numbers, this block is a cracker to build. And right now, the blockheads are about to find out that it's even trickier to rebuild. Morning. Hello. Hello, hello. Day -day. Howdy. Hey. Howdy. 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 Come on in. Hi. How are you? How are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, despite the fact that we have given you plenty of renovating cash over the last few weeks, some of you are still struggling to pay your bills. So, I'm here to tell you that the Bank of Scotty has run out of cash. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. See ya. You have <laughs> bled me dry. I got nothing left. So much for my retirement, Shell. <laughs> I know. But you're in luck because I just happen to know someone who has a few bob up her sleeve tucked away. Ah, Shall? yes. It seems I am a much better bookkeeper than any of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, like all things on the block, you're going to have to work for it. That's right. We've spoken to your judges and we've come up with a challenge that's not only going to help you come auction day, but also help you stay ahead of your game. So, for today's challenge, you will have 24 hours... Yes. 
to redo a room that has already been delivered in a little game that we like to call Reno Replay. <laughs> <laughs> I find this challenge really exciting though, like I mean, it's extra money that we get to put into our apartment. That we were trying to budget for out of our yeah. money. I got butterflies. I think it's exciting. Oh, this is cute. Our judges have personally selected rooms that they believe you can redo in 24 hours to fit seamlessly with the rest of your apartment. Tell them the prize, Shell. Hold on a second. Tell them the prize. Hold on a second. First, I want to tell them the rooms that okay. they'll be doing. Darren and Dee, you will finally get the chance to deliver the master bedroom you have always dreamed of. The judges thought this room would benefit from larger furniture pieces by the fire. You should rethink the rug, the light pendants, and the bedside tables. <laughs> This is the room that we definitely felt like we wanted to do. We were never happy with it because we never really got to finish it and we had a lot of options to put in here and the ones that were chosen by the other contestants weren't what we would have put in. Simon and Shannon, it's your most recent delivery, your living dining room. The judges thought this room really lacked the wow factor. Styling is the key in this space and you should rethink the sofa and the lighting. Also consider the size and style of the rug in your living area, as this will be essential to tying it all together. Yep. Max and Carsten, it's your second bedroom, which your judges thought lacked a focal point and personality. You should also rethink the positioning of your artwork. Layering the bed linen and accessories will help soften the clinical feel it currently has. Think more along the lines of your master bedroom. Tell them the price. Just wait a <laughs> second. I'm really excited about the price. <laughs> Chris and Jenna, they Which have one? a lot to say about your second bedroom as well. No surprises there. The shelves should be removed from danger heights and the rustic log cabin styling has got to go. You might want to think about replacing the timber panelling with plaster, considering that you don't have any other timber features in your apartment like that. You know, back then we were still amateur and I think now we've kind of got a better idea of what our apartment looks like, so I'm pretty excited that they've given us five grand to be able to go out and to redo it. Michael and Carleen, it's your study area. Your judges want you to pay particular attention to the proportions of your desk and chair area, and they also thought you should reconsider the size, style, and positioning of your ruck. Tell them the prize. All right, all right. Here I we will go. Tell them. The prize. <laughs> now, Scotty's been telling me that you've been struggling to pay your trades? Well, the prize for this challenge is a mighty helpful hand from Mitre 10. They are going to fit the bill for all your trades for this week's ensuite. Whoa. Everything. We're talking waterproofing, tiling, plastering, electricians, plumbers, the lot. Wow. All thanks to Mitre 10. What a prize. What a prize. If we win this challenge and we got free trades for our ensuite, oh. OMG, we will have so much more plants on our terrace. It's not yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> the prize is the best prize I've ever had yet. Pay for an entire week's trades. Which is a lot of money. The judges know exactly how important a redo room is come auction day, but this time you're going to have to impress the reigning Redo room champions. Would you please make welcome the super impressive Super Case? Yeah. Team Super K, congratulations. Kyle and Cara were the challenge champions of last season. So they're the perfect choice to judge this redo room challenge. You guys have won every single challenge you've been on. And it feels good. <laughs> How are you? Good to see you. How are you guys? Yeah, good. Who could forget our fans turned favourites, Kyle and Cara, who walked away with over half a million bucks in prize money in the last series of The Block. Plenty of coin. Oh, yeah. How is life <laughs> after picking up half a million dollars? Really good. <laughs> a good answer. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been fun. It's been really busy. We've started our own business sort of just off the back of the block. So, yeah, we've been super busy with that, which has been good. Good stuff. Now, you guys had a massive knack for challenges. In fact, you won over 30 grand challenge prize money. What is the secret? 
think outside the square. Yeah, you gotta think differently. Always try and reflect on, you know, the feedback you guys have had from the judges, but um, it's up to you what you do with it. Just have a think about how um, your room fits into the overall <coughs> scheme of your apartment. Make sure it all ties in. Okay, wise words. Now, at the end of your 24-hour challenge, Kyle and Cara will judge your rooms. And the team that has the most impressive transformation will take home that cracking prize. Now, I know this is a massive challenge. Because I'm a good bloke, I've organised a small army of Mitre Ten's finest to help you with the heavy lifting, the painting, the plastering, the handiwork to get the job done. Come on out, fellas. Look at them, aren't they impressive? Yeah. This is my small army. You watch them go. You ready for this? Are you ready to do some work? Yes, yes sir. Oh, what about that? <laughs> Unbelievable, aren't they? They're like a well-oiled machine. Let's see how we go. Do you people think that Shell and I are terrific people? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, blockheads, are you ready to play Reno Replay? Yes. 24 hours. Your time starts now. Good luck. We do challenge. This is a massive challenge for us. This would be good though, because it's not really structural. Most of it is furnishings. If we win this, it can pay for our whole ensuite upstairs. Pay for our bath. Oh. And Manny's flights. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Oh. All right, I need to make a bit of room. While the brothers from apartment four get straight into rearranging their redo room, Keith jams on the handbrake. G'day, guys. Hey, on, mate. Sorry to interrupt. It's all right. right. But I've been up measuring your, your screed thickness. Yeah. We've got a big issue, a serious issue. We better go out and have a look. All right. All right. Now, remember that height we had of 65 millimetres for the con polish concreting and everything like that? Well, the screed is no different. It's still concreting. Yeah. There, we've roughly got 100 mil. It's supposed to be 65. Yep. There, we've got about 90. Come and have a look if you want. Yeah, yeah no, sure. lovely. Regardless, we're probably about 20 or 30% higher with this screw than what we're supposed to be. Yep. So, I've had a chat with the engineer, and he said, pull it up. Pull the screed up. Pull the screed up. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding you. Pull this up. We won't finish the bathroom. That's it. Yeah. OK. Back soon. All Thanks, right. mate. Far out. There's got to be some way around this. I worked out. I'm flipping bust my balls to get this at the way it is. The screeders are bust their asses. I'd stayed up till five o'clock waterproofing this last night. Figure not happy. All right, let's do the challenge. From one screening mess to another, Darren from apartment five has just been told that he won't be able to use that magical fast drying waterproofing product after all. I spoke to Neil this morning about aquablock membrane. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm wanting to. Uh, I need to cancel that because uh, I was. Speaking to my Tyler, and um, you can't, he informed me you can't put that particular product over a green screed. The difference is that we've got a screed, it's sand and cement, and you can't put this particular product uh, directly on top of it. It needs to have another coat of something else on top of it before that can go on, and that takes a full day to dry. So we've cancelled it and just gone back to the original Ardex waterproofing, which we did before. And we'll just have to pray that it dries in time. We're ready to go and fill up some hot air and... <laughs> Later. <laughs> You're full of hot air, babe. That'll be easy. For you? <laughs> hot chocolate? Yeah. Sides of the little bits of history repeating. We're in the middle of a 24-hour redo room challenge, and if that wasn't enough to contend with, these guys still have to deliver an ensuite in three days. I can patch that tonight, hey, Joe? Yeah, yeah, we'll put the heater on. 
And while most blockheads are getting on with it... I'd like to get um, a four-poster bed in here and have two lights at the sides instead of in the middle. Maybe you don't wrap it around. That is awesome. To wrap around? Yeah, but not heaps, just a little bit. I reckon it sick. This isn't a massive thing to do. No, but... It's dead set, make a bed. Find something for there, move an artwork, put some pendants in. Mm. We should get that knocked over pretty quick. Yeah. In apartment four, Keith's grilling Simon over who approved the height of the screen. So you remain adamant that Ian, one of the guys that works for me, has come in... Yes. ..and I'll told you, over what, at night, after hours, that when you were doing this, that you walked him up here, showed him what you're doing, you actually asked whether he wanted mesh in it. That's what I'm Correct. being told. I need to talk to the tilers, but what he told me... Yep. ..cos he was coming down from us, I said, oh, did you look at my... ..did you look at the bed? He goes, yep, all good. I said, sweet. Well, I came up here and then the, the two tilers who are here today, um, they said Ian came up and had a look cos we're about 110, 120 mil high. And you told him that? And... They told him that, they measured it, and then he was OK with it. You swear you said that? Yes, 100%. I wouldn't lie. Wouldn't lie about this, no. Everyone gets busy on the block, and it's easy to forget who's done what and when. Brendo, what about to you? So Simon's checking with his tilers to make sure the story he's told Keith is bang on. Did you say Ian came up and had a look at the screening job? Simon's just found out from his tilers that Keith's guy, Ian, didn't check the screed after all. They didn't talk to Ian. Keithy. Simon. A bit of a clarification. You've got your tilers here too? Yeah, yeah tilers here. They did the job. There'd been a, a little bit of a miscommunication problem. When they were talking about clarifying it with their boss about the screed, I was talking about Ian because I saw Ian come down the stairs. So Ian apparently didn't have a look at it. He didn't have a look at it? No. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Because Ian told me he didn't go up there either. Yeah. And I wasn't... You see him at all? Yeah. Why we did it? Bad communication on probably on my part. OK. So you were telling fibs? No, I wasn't telling fibs. No. Sure you weren't telling fibs? I'm not telling lies. That's not okay. me. All right. Simon was apologetic. But at the end of the day, you don't accuse someone of making a big mistake like that unless you've got all the facts. All right. Well, we've still got that issue. It hasn't gone away. Yep. The screed is simply too thick or too high. Yep. So at the moment, as it stands, we have to pull that screed up. So it's more of a weight issue? It's a weight issue. On the slab? On the existing slab. These slabs, they're chunky, but they haven't got the correct amount of steel. They're actually weaker than what they look. We've inherited a problem. We can't just build over the top of it and hide the fact. As we build with the block, we always fix these things up. We're trying to do the right thing here. We're not going to do a dodgy reno. We're going to do a perfect reno. And that's what we're trying to achieve at the moment. Sorry, guys. No. See you Thank later. You. No. Meanwhile, in apartment one... I guess if we put a chair and a side table out here, then you... Oh, I don't know. Chair out there. You can't put a chair out there. You can. That's a hallway. It's a... Well, the idea was to make it more of a room, not a thoroughfare. I think our first line of business is to pull everything out. Yeah. And if we're getting rid of this, pull this out. And then just look at the space then as a whole and go, right, how are we going to do this? Great idea. So while Mike gets stuck into dismantling the study, Carlene hits the high street along with her fellow shoppers. Carlene's goal? To pick up a rug, chair and a throw. This shouldn't take too long. How are you? Hello, how are you going? Hello, girl. What can I help you with today? Um, we have to redo our study. OK. I need to look at a rug option. Yep. And I need to look at the possibility of putting in some sort of armchair. OK. It's adding blues. Yeah, no. Is that going to clash with your yep. upholstery? I think anything with a real pattern will clash. Okay. So it'd have to be something pretty neutral. Carlene's finding this redo room tough to redesign. The judges want it to feel more like a room, 
and less like a thoroughfare. This is a total brain bender. Oh, what about something like that? Oh. It's beautiful, it's stunning, and then maybe instead of doing an armchair, you do a love seat. It has to be narrow. It is narrow. Do you want me to take you up to it? Because it will look beautiful with that charcoal in there. And the other thing is, I already have a day bed, so then I'm having too many. But if they want it to be, a, like, seen as a room, I know, it's so the more people you sit, the bigger it is, the more room-like it is. I can't even envisage how this will work. <laughs> oh. Very confused by this room. Just contemplating putting a chair in there. Um, what do you think about this chair? I can walk you over to it in a second. Um, but then it can't be a big chair because you can't cut off access. You just talked to Keith then? Yeah. Did you mention it to him that he oh, said... He, he accused me of fibbing. Well, that was awkward. Not good, is it? No, we got a... That's definite verdict, is it? Anyway, the situation is we're pulling up the floor. This is a real blow for the brothers, who still haven't started on their challenge room. Out of all the setbacks, for me, this is the worst. Yeah, yeah because we put the effort in. We're right in the middle of a massive challenge. That is a massive, massive, massive problem. The boys aren't the only ones behind schedule. So this is the James Harrison settee, and it is really narrow. Mm, I think the fabric will work both with the rug yeah. and with other material you already have mm -hmm. on um, your window seat. Mm -hmm. Sit in, it's really comfortable. Let's have a little brain wave. So we could put this on the same side as our desk and then put our bench seat Opposite, because that will be narrow. Yeah, and that when you walk in, you could even use it as a storage space instead. How will it be storage? If you have like things underneath it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've noticed that each of the female block species has their own unique shopping style. <laughs> D is like a bull in a china shop. Just one. I'm just going to screw him down on price. <laughs> no, keep going. Max is the magpie. Billowing is an art. It is. That's the thing. It's a simple thing, but it makes a difference. Jenna is a rare breed I call the anti-shopper. <laughs> and Carlene is, well, like a deer in the headlights. Hi. Hi. I'm just thinking, I'm just looking at a little love seat. And uh, <laughs> it's just a narrow couch. I was just thinking if we could put this on the same side as the desk. To be honest with you, I don't know where you're thinking to put everything. You haven't given me an answer on that. Yes. Mark's here now, anyway. Do you want to talk to Mark? Why? Just to tell him what you want to do. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. You have to think about that too. <laughs> I'm, no, just, I'm very confused. Hey? No. <laughs> I'm very confused about which way to face everything. Like, yeah. Mark will think that I'm going to make the decisions on this, but that ain't going to happen. Coming up. Carsten does the dirty on D during the Super K's garage sale. I'm not involved in this. This morning, Keith discovered that Simon and Shannon's ensuite screed was too thick and heavy. But Keith always has the contestants' interests at heart. So he's looking for a way to help the brothers solve this weighty problem. Keith has an idea on how he can save the screed and runs it by the engineer. Beautiful. OK. Thanks, mate. Bye. It's going to be OK. Well, I'm worried about getting out there because I think these guys are going to give me a kiss. So I'm going to drop the news and just bolt. Our challenge judges, Kyle and Cara, came up with a clever way to kill two birds with one stone. The couples need to get rid of some of the unsuitable furniture from the redo rooms and raise a bit of coin for the challenge. 
So they organised a barbie and a garage sale downstairs. Colin Cara, get over here. What's happening, mate? So I reckon, because you guys are young and beautiful, super case. <laughs> super case. And you're into your tweets and your... Your facey watsers. Yeah. Yeah. So on the social media, tell them about this unreal barbecue that I'm cooking. You can be like to say, I'm going to be down here serving. The like, young blokes will flock here <laughs> for a barbie. <laughs> and when they find out, you'll get jealous. And tell them about the garage stuff. Yeah. Cheap sweet. furniture. Yeah. So that's start, great. you know, Sounds doing like your plan. stuff, you're All tweeting. Right. All right. Where's your phone? Where's your phone? Where's your phone? Maybe we should do a selfie. This one's a really special one. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been on the floor. Who wants it? No, no, no. I'll get you a fresh one. There's no time to eat bangers for Dee and Darren, who are on the hunt for a modern four-poster bed to fill their master bedroom redo room. Hi. Hi. I'm Dee. How are you? Nice to meet you. Ursula. Ursula. So we spoke on the phone. That's yeah, the bed. That's the that one. Come down yeah. and have a look. It's gorgeous. All right. OK. This is the bed. Gorgeous. It's going to look perfect with these. This is my bedding that I had, so it's yeah, really similar wow. to yours. Amazing, yeah. yeah. So perfect. Right. I've been to House of Orange in Armadale and I've ordered the big white four poster bed, which is gorgeous. It's really simple. That's exactly what I wanted. And this is in the Dutch blonde finish. So this is, is what I'm getting, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the white wash. Yeah. Tough day, Dezza. There's a place up on. High Street called Maison S that I'll go and look at some bedsides maybe. And then I'll probably need to go to Richmond and have a look at some couches. There's no tools in that shop, so maybe the next shop we go to there'll be a nail gun or something. While the cat's away, the mice will play. And with Darren and Dee out shopping, Carson's up to no good at the garage sale. It seems to be in the way of everyone and we're not too sure how much it is. Hold on. That furniture belongs to the Double Ds. I'm not involved in this. <laughs> oh, maybe that's for ruining the Suzuki. Maybe, you know, she's been playing tricks on people, apparently, Dee. You're assuming it was Dee who put the Vaseline on the cars. You may be starting a battle with the wrong prankster. And it doesn't take long for a customer to notice the free signs on Dee's furniture. Free. Do you want it? Yeah. Can we have it? I guess so. Well, we didn't put these on here. Thanks. The others must yeah, have. Yeah, awesome. Go. <laughs> uh, thanks, Karen. <laughs> no worries. Yes, good. Bring it out. We just had a couple of girls come along and notice that there's free labels. I have no idea why the contestants would put free tickets, but um, yeah, each to their own. If they want to sell them for free, <laughs> go for it. If there's one person on the block you don't want to cross, it's Queen D. Carsten is playing with fire. Having spent four hours meandering in a shopping wasteland of indecision, Carlene has finally committed to a chair. Or has she? I have to consider my... Oh, so many decisions. My head hurts. And then I have... I sort of have... What about a... So here's the Casper wool rug in the ivory, mm. just to give you an idea of yeah. it next to the Sloan. That's nice. OK. I'll take the two throws, the yep. chair, the rug and the mirror, but yep. I'll lose the poof. Not a problem. Let's pop those two just for you. for budget's sake. Okay. I need to go back to the block now and lay out everything I have, and I want to be able to return my rug if it's not going to work, and I want to be able to do that today, which means I need to get going. That shop assistant has the patience of a saint. Great, thank you very much. Back at the block, Keith can finally deliver the good news Simon and Shannon have been waiting for all day. And the phone again, the engineer. Got his arm up like that. Come on, come on, come on. Did you tap him out? No, but I've, I've actually explained to him that we've actually got a great big steel beam. Picks up that edge of the bathroom. Mm -hmm. We've also got a, a double skim brick wall going across the middle. Yes. Which would obviously help the situation. I explained the span between those two components is two and a half metres, which is a pretty small span. Yeah. 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 Guess what? You're OK. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Come on. I don't want to. Bring it in. Bring it in. Hey, you got a boss there with you. <laughs> but 
But, but yeah. he's also explaining we've got a lightweight timber floor approximately here. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to go downstairs, get under the lightweight floor, locate the external corners of that lightweight floor by drilling a hole up into here. Yeah. Then I want you to get every corner, get a chalk line, draw that square. Then we yep. need to cut an expansion joint just through the screed, not right through the slab, but just through okay. the screed. Right. Fill it up with a corking compound yes. to prevent any cracking from happening. Yep. And then you guys can carry on. Okay. It'll probably take you a few hours, but then you'll be basically back to where you are right now. Thanks, Thanks right. Keithy. We'll um, hopefully be tall on tomorrow. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank See you later. Thank you. One of the best news I've ever heard in my life is him going, no, nah, you can stay down. It doesn't have to be jackhammered up. We just got to make a few expansion joints, which will take a couple hours, but it's better than not delivering a bathroom. Hey, Blockaholics, for terrific deals on products used on the Block Glasshouse, head to Nine Jump In on your favourite device. Follow the links to the Block Shop and get closer to the show than you have ever before. I'm on the pursuit. The prize for winning the 24-hour redo room challenge is a total game changer. They are going to fit the bill for all your trades for this week's ensuite. Whoa! Supercars did win their redo room and they walked away with half a million bucks. Yeah, it's a big challenge. With everyone's budgets looking bleaker than a snowfield in summer, having the ensuite completely paid for could be the tipping point to victory. In the final few weeks on the block. Sold on that one. Bottom one? Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. Well done. Cool. This prize has real weight. Much like Simon and Shannon's screed, that will now, much to their relief, remain intact. However, it's taken the best part of the day to sort out, leaving them with a measly two hours to shop for the challenge. I've never seen a bloke so happy to get off the tools and hit the shops. Seems we just lost four hours trying to avert the crisis back at our ensuite. We are now panicking. <laughs> Cue panic music. You call this panicking? Yeah. Or maybe we could um, put two or three in. All right, leave it with me. These are a bit small, aren't they? While Shannon scopes the rugs. I like this. There's a cool rug. Little brother Simon bolts to the next lighting store. He needs to find something quickly because they're running out of time. Cue panic music again. Oh, yes. This is awesome. I have one left yeah. in this size, um, and they come completely flat packed, so you do have to assemble it yourself. Ooh. <laughs> How hard is it? It's not too hard. I've done one before myself. Can, so can... can I take this one? Yes, I could do that. Really? <laughs> I think I've already taken it. <laughs> oh, Flip, what the heck happened there? Let me grab a lever. Oh, <laughs> my brother said don't touch anything. <laughs> Gotta make a quick decision. Shannon's not here to help me. I'll go with that one. Go with that one? Sol is sure. in. No worries. Thank you very much. I'll do that for you. I think it's all right. Go down. Carlene is back at the block, ready to see if the new rug she purchased was actually worth four hours of deliberation. Put any cow hide in their place. Oh, I just don't see how that other one will look good. Makes me nervous. Then everything will be sort of. I think that makes so much more sense. You don't have to decide now, anyway. Why? Can't you decide when the furniture and stuff gets here? We're keep under budget. I need to do some maths. I had serious rug issues today. 
in my head, and still now, I do not see how any other rug could work beyond a cowhide. This just makes so much more sense to me. This is asymmetrical. We'll stick with it. At the end of the day, they want me to make it a room, but it is a thoroughfare. There's one, two, three, four bedrooms coming onto this space and the stairwell. I've seen that look before. I reckon it'll be a long night of decision making for Carlene. Over in apartment five, the Double D's velvet wall is being replaced with their signature wood panelling. We're putting up MDF lining sheets, and then obviously it's got to be puttied and painted and architraves and quads. You happy with that? Oh, nice boys. Yeah, good job. All right, you just have to fill it and paint it. Yeah, we'll fill it and paint it. That's no dramas. So we've got everything on site now except for the bed, so we've just got to paint that back wall. We've got the paint and... Just going to get some skirting boards in the morning. So first thing in the morning, I'm going to get some skirting boards. We've got everything else yeah. pretty much here, ready to go up. And I'll go and get some flowers or a plant and that's it. All right. Sweet job. Come on. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, mate. Good on you. Thanks, Wayne. With one hour of shopping time left, Shannon needs to make some quick choices and even faster purchases. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, how much? I'll figure out what the best price I can do is. Yeah? Yeah. I love that. I think it's really, really nice. Yeah. I'd much rather a big, illustrious rug, but I just, we don't have the time to sort of look around town. So we've come to um, Mezai, and they've hooked us up with a nice TV cabinet, which is not exactly what I want, but I'll modify it at home. The items that we've got have definitely got a little, little bit more style. The boxes that weren't ticked, that the judges sort of noted, we're definitely going to tick those boxes. That was good. I think we scored, bro. Yeah. We did really well. I had um, Steve from Mitre 10. He was amazing. He was a gun. He helped me pull the table down. We put curtains up. He was drying off these patches. He was just non-stop the whole time he was here. So we did well. We got most of it knocked over now. And I don't think yeah, we'll be going too late into the night. You reckon butter up? Butter up. And there's going to there's gonna be a lot of little features like liner. I've yeah. got 15 minutes. Tonight, we're going to put the black bun on on our, on our bed head and our niche in here. Get the plastering done, hopefully we can paint it and restyle. And tomorrow we just gotta put the glass in and that's it. Sounds easy. Sounds easy. It's like a mini room reveal within a room reveal week. Yeah. So what happened in the garage sale today? What do you mean? Did anybody sell anything? Um uh, not sure. You're in so much yeah. trouble. No, but it wasn't me, but I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Like... Oh, I feel sick in the belly for well, you. Well, we've done a community service. Someone got a cracker bargain and we've improved their house. Let's look at the positives here, right? Well, let's look at the negatives. Oh. I wasn't involved. I'm not backing you up. Somebody said that they hid our stuff. Our stuff got hidden. And people put free tags on. I won't be happy if that happened. If our stuff got given away for free, somebody's going to be paying me back. Stay tuned, mate. Better watch your step, Carsten. Simon and Shannon have been on the joy ride from hell today, and they still think it's been worth it. I see the challenge as an excellent opportunity. This ensuite is expensive. It's probably going to cost us about twelve or thirteen thousand dollars. To have that paid for is as good as cash. Also, we get to spend five thousand dollars of Shelley's money on furniture, which will help with our build. Effectively, it's a seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars win for us if we win this. Mm. It's probably the biggest win on block history. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> Tomorrow night, the epic twenty-four hour challenge comes to a nail-biting end. I reckon they pierce straight through the cable. It's annoying, because that wall should be done by now. I don't see how this ride works. Oh, how long is it going to take you to put it together, Hans? Half an hour. Or well, if we make it 15. Calls go! With the prize being free trades for ensuite week, everyone wants it. The prize is the best prize I've ever had yet. And the winner is... <laughs> Their secret weapons... We're going to have to keep this very quiet for the next couple of days. That is sensational. Carsten pranks Dee by giving away her expensive chair. 
Taking the chair for me is like suicide. A revenge that's very, very sweet. Can't seem to find my toilet anywhere. Don't poke the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> and at last, a resolution. Petrol? Yep. That's petrol. We're basically sitting on a bomb. This is the worst disaster ever happened on the block, without doubt. The block's day of reckoning is finally here. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot riding on this. The what? whole block is riding on this. So these are very important. Come on, tell me, mate. <laughs> I am petrified.